Hey everyone, Savu here and in today's video we're going to recreate the Terraria block and ore mining system. Let's jump into it. To start off the tutorial I found some Terraria sprite sheets, a couple of pickaxe icons and some of the blocks available in the world of Terraria which we are going to mine. I also tried my best to recreate the mining animation and call it every time I click on the attack button. The first block we are going to mine will be the golden one and consists of three different sprites. Our goal here is to hit the block and change its appearance based on the sprite sheet. In order to do so, of course we create a new script and start coding. First, we are going to create a public sprite array that will be filled with the sprites of the specific block. Next, we are going to need a public function that will be called every time our pickaxe hits the block. In here, we will assign a new integer that gets the random value between 0 and 2. Note that when using random.range, the first number is always included and the second one not. Next, we will get the sprite renderer component from our block and assign to it the new random sprite from our array. Let's now test how this works. Inside of Unity, we are going to give the new script to our golden block and set the array size to 3. Finally, we just assign the sprites to the empty slots of the script. With this done, we also have to make our block detectable for our pickaxe. First step is to create a new tag, for example, or and assign this to the golden block game object. Next, we will create a new C-sharp script for the pickaxe and open it up. All we need here is a new on trigger enter 2D function with a collider 2D parameter. We then check if the collider is set to trigger and also compare the tag which must be the same with the one on the block game object. If all the requirements are true, we get access to the brick script and simply call the picked function that we created there. Back in Unity, when I enable the pickaxe game object, you can also see that it has a circle collider 2D with a trigger value enabled. I now assign the new pickaxe script to it and disable it again. Another very important step is to assign a new rigid body 2D component to our block. Set the gravity scale to 0 since we want it to stay in the air and click on play. As you can see, we can successfully hit the block but the only problem is that it's not always changing its appearance. This happens because every time we hit the block, a new random sprite from the array will be assigned. This new sprite may happen to be the same as the current sprite of the block and that's why we don't see any changes. This needs to be fixed and to do so we open again our brick script. In here we are going to set two new integer values, one for the old sprite and one for the new sprite. We are also going to need a new list with integer values that we are going to call available sprites. In the start function, the first thing to do is to give a zero value to our old sprite integer. This is because the first sprite of our block is also the first element of our sprites array. Next, we are going to fill the list with integer values starting from zero up to the length of our sprites array. In our example, these values will be zero, one and two since we only have three sprites. Now in the public picked function, the first thing to do is to remove the old sprite from our list. Doing so will prevent our block from getting the same sprite every time being hit. As for the new sprite, we will get a new random value from the remaining sprites inside of our list. This is easily done using again the random dot range from zero up to the available sprites dot count. With a new sprite value being set, we simply assign this one to our sprite renderer. At this point we are actually done, but we also need to make some changes to our list for the next time we are going to pick the block. This means that we are going to add to our list the old sprite our block had previously. And after that, we replace the old sprite value with the new sprite we currently assigned to the block. With these two lines of code, the next time we are going to pick on the block, it will have a new list of available sprites and it will randomly change its appearance to one of them. Let me now click on play and show you the result. As you can see now, 
every time we hit the block, it always changes its appearance. Of course, the more sprites you have, the more variations you can expect from the block. I will now do the same thing, but for another block. I think this green one is called Chlorophyll block and it's really rare inside of Terraria. I am going to give it our brick script and assign its own sprite sheets. Also, to make this process more faster, I will just copy the box collider 2D and the rigid body 2D from the gold block to the chlorophyll one. Don't forget to change the tag to OR and click on play. Looks like everything is working perfectly, just like in the real world of Terraria. Now you can watch me play around with the result since I really enjoyed creating it. If you also liked this Terraria tutorials, please let me know. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make some blocks stronger than others and make them break easily using another pickaxe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell in order to get notified for the next episode. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao!